Welcome back to Dylan of Sid Meier's Civilization IV, Colonization, where we continue the conquest of the Americas on max difficulty as the Dutch. So the petty criminal right now, put him to work as a lumberjack, so that we can consistently build political points in England's folly. We are eventually going to move most of these people inland, but that's not safe at the moment. You know, on second thought, building a schoolhouse here wouldn't be a terrible idea. I would like to move the farmer over to Remembrance, but he's best used on the farm right here at the corn. So let's build a schoolhouse so that we can educate expert farmers in England's folly. This colonist will also be put to work carpentry, and we'll get it done in 8 turns. The fur trader here, I'm trying to move him down to Beaverton, because Beaverton has these furs. We've got a converted native that we're going to assign to lumberjacking and gamble. They now have stable lumber income, and I can ship lumber elsewhere if I'd like to do so, or have the colonists do other things from time to time. Alright, so looking at the map that we just revealed from the ancient ruins, there appear to be at least four Aztec villages left, so hopefully we'll be able to arm quite a few of them and slow down the Spanish expansion of west. Sieging the Spanish pretty soon is going to be advisable. Oh, they got an actual fort built in Isabella, but they've left the forest behind so we can siege from the forest. We've got the army on the merchantman, going to send him a little bit more south. We might want to focus on the Spanish, but... I think strangling the French is a good idea. The French are technically ahead in points, but the game doesn't tell me how much of that is Founding Fathers and how much is actually land. And we got our second mission in the Inca. They're actually a little upset that we declared war on their friend. And we're arming up that hardy pioneer from Beaverton, so we can finally start doing some actual work. My first focus typically is actually building a road network. Building the improvements only slightly improves the amount of goods that you get, so a road network is more important to me so that we have better wagon train movement eventually. We're now going to begin focusing purely on coke production in Beaverton once I get the fur trader rolling. I've exhausted the stores of lumber I had in there so I might as well start focusing on coats. Coats are the most expensive manufactured good right now. Alright Montezuma, how much will you give me for 100 guns? 1,932. Wow, I've almost tripled my money. I will take that and sail immediately back home for some more. Now the Spanish do have a lot of bonuses. Ooh, French careful. The Spanish do have a lot of bonuses against the natives, but arming them is going to help for sure. It's also going to be good if we get them some horses to make them mounted braves. But the issue with that is that the AI will like automatically go up to the mounted versions, I think. And the mounted versions don't get defensive bonuses. So leaving them as armed braves is probably better for defending those settlements. So I think I'm not going to sell them horses in that case. That would probably be a silly idea. I want them to have the best defensive posture they can manage. And all of our treasures are set and ready to go to Europe. There's the English. They're up here way in the north. What the hell are they doing up here? Maybe they somehow settled like the western side of the map. As far as I can tell, they don't even have any points yet. So they don't have any land. Oh, the Spanish are expanding so rapidly. They have, looks like, four colonies most likely. Probably three. Let's talk to them. Find out. Three. Yep. We've gotten our first converted native from the mission over in the Inca. However, moving him by land is going to be dangerous. I think our best bet is to sit pretty in the town until we clear the tupee completely. Which will not be much longer. The army, in fact, is establishing their first beachhead right about now. And we got, I think this is our second upgrade for the privateer, right? I could go with more navigation, but now we need to make him stronger. Let's go with strength for veterancy. How you doing, France? Three dragoons, three population. Alright, we'll be coming for you soon enough. Once we deal with the Tupi, we're pretty much immediately going to sail north to attack France. Now that we're effectively clearing out the native problem in our lands, that's such a horrible statement. <laughs> we're going to work on a wagon train over in Campbell. It's going to take them quite a while to build it. Or I could see... I don't think the converted native does very well at carpentry. Nah, he only makes two instead of three hammers. So it's better just to leave him on lumber. Or just make some fish, because we have plenty of lumber in stock. Get some more colonists, I like that. And now we have our first proper coat production facility in Beaverton. We're going to be making 66 gold per turn from this city. We have an absolute ton of gold on hand, so we need to do some purchasing. Tools right now aren't very expensive. Muskets did go up to 8, but that's fine. We'll make plenty of money selling to the Aztecs. I also need to keep in mind that I need enough money on hand to restock the caravel, but we'll have plenty of money from the galleon right here. 
But I think my best bet is going to be getting maybe a Tobacconist, because I need that skill. So we're going to pick up a Tobacconist for only 900 gold, that's amazing. And I'm kind of planning out my inland city settles. Alright, so this is the objective. We're going to build a fishing village right here, just to claim land, basically. A toll city right here next to the iron deposit with access to more tobacco. A small little rum village right here to develop rum from the marshes. A cigar town that's going to generate a crap ton of cigars and tobacco. Silverton will be located right here to mine the mountains. We'll build another tool city right here to mine these hills. Cigar town 2.0 goes right here. And then a little silver mining outpost is going to go right here to directly access the silver here. This silver outpost will probably go before this silver outpost, but maybe not. I got to think about that. It's very interesting that you can't actually hire a free colonist at all. I also want to mention that the education in this game is a little bit weird. In the original classic version, it took a set amount of time to educate people. In this version, the vanilla version, you have an increase in cost of education as you educate more people. So education kind of becomes sort of less valuable over time, but not exactly. I'd kind of like a firebrand preacher, but we're up to needing 91 crosses. Even in a church, he'd only make 6 crosses per turn. This means that it takes him 15 turns to generate enough gold to get somebody new. And I'd say that's worth about 600 gold. So 600 divided by 15 means he produces about 40 gold per turn. And that would actually decrease over time because the amount of crosses needed does increase. I'm not sure if it's linear or what exactly. And I'm not sure if it's capped in this game. I'll tell you what, I'm going to get another silver miner. That'll make two silver miners once we demote the soldier that we have. And then I'm going to grab... I think I might want to focus hard on food production. So let's grab a farmer, and let's grab another farmer. That way we can get free colonists, we can train those colonists if we'd like to do so. Francis got their own little missionary running around. It is a regular missionary though. Looks like he's trying to get better relations with the Sioux. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to get the Sioux to declare a war on him anytime soon. We'll be dealing with the French sooner rather than later. I'm not really worried about that. Even if the Sioux declare war on us, all I'm going to do really with these colonies is probably extract all the colonists that I want and then basically just leave them there to produce political points for me. I think I might have an excessive amount of cannons. <laughs> I'm going to move them up towards Sushi City. There's no point actually putting them on the beachhead. Sai or Ra will die this turn. Thankfully we have two soldiers here so we can guard both the tower that we move into and the tower that we're stuck in once we do these two attacks. Oh wow, he lost a lot of health in this fight, but this one did a lot better. Oh, they brought up one more defender. That's okay. I do not have a problem with that. Huh, it's 1569 and we're already up to 18% tax rate. You might wonder why I always accept tax rate pretty much. Um, I guess I just don't care that much. I think I can pretty rapidly grow such that the tax rate doesn't really matter. And oftentimes I think he asks for things that I often like to produce and sell, such as guns just now. I make a lot of money dealing arms to the uh, Aztecs. Alright, time to die. Goodbye, Tupi Village. We got 434 gold from that siege. That's well, not bad, but it ain't great. Got ourselves another population growth in Gamble. This one I'm going to use to accelerate the production of the wagon trains. And then after that, I'm probably going to begin thinking about building the inland cities. I really don't feel entirely comfortable doing that until the final Tupi Village is gone, though. Yeah, we're going to build the over 10 pretty fast. I'm going to work on building a road over that direction right now. I've almost gotten all of my colonies linked up except for the link between England's Folly and Sushi City. And I always hope that the natives will come out in the open so I can shoot them. I'd like to get experience on my regular soldiers, but it's very risky to attack a native settlement with regular soldiers. As you saw earlier, <laughs> that Dragoon died in a 1 in a 32 chance. That was painful. I also gained a population in Remembrance. This free colonist I think I'm going to send down to the schoolhouse in England's Folly learn how to be a proper expert farmer. And I kind of think I've harassed French enough, but I'm not sure. Arming the Aztecs is good. It is going to slow down the Spanish, but I haven't harassed them quite enough, I think. So let's sail the privateer north. Let's go have a chat with the Spaniards. Our galleon has arrived in port, so we're going to sell all of our junk, pick up all of our people. I need to keep at least 1600 gold on hand for guns, but the caravel is going to take a little bit of time getting to Europe. So there's a decent chance that king might ask for money. Go ahead and let's buy two more people. Let's make them farmers. We're gonna need a lot of farmers. 
the more food that we generate, the more colonists that we have. Of course, I could, you know, generate gold, but I think it'll work out just fine. I might end up using the people learning in the schoolhouses in England's Folly and Remembrance here pretty soon to become tobacconists. I'm going to need a lot of tobacconists. I'm also going to need carpenters and a few lumberjacks. We're going to swap the colonist out of Beaverton for the converted native. He does better fur trapping. And this colonist we're going to send north up to one of the schoolhouses, probably to become a carpenter. Ooh, is that a frigate? That is a frigate. That frigate can take on my privateer, so I do not want to send my privateer up here. Looks like I'm just going to be harassing the French forever. That was kind of my worry that the Spanish would get enough gold on hand to get some actual defenses. And they're on the other side of the map from me, which makes it that much harder to reach them. It does appear like I may have almost completely explored the entire map. Unless there's some kind of hidden island over here in the west. Or some hidden islands over here that I just don't know about yet. Escorting this treasure bag is going to be a problem. I can't move him onto the merchant man. Only galleons can do that. So I'd have to move him around the water. But that does expose him to attack. So I think what I'm going to do is just have to let him move around. Try to sneak around. And then hope he makes it. But other than that. Well, he's just going to have to uh, hope. He's not worth that much money anyway. We need to move on. Down to Para, right down here. Unfortunately, we're going to be in forest while trying to siege the city. Them attacking into forest gives them an effective strength of 3.5. Us being in the forest is going to give us an effective strength of 4.5. So we'll have the advantage, but it's no guarantee. Schoolhouse is up in England's Folly. Three colonists are immediately going into that schoolhouse. It is going to take them 10 turns to graduate, which is quite a while. During that time, they could generate goods such as cigars. And over 10 turns, they'd make me about 300 gold worth of cigars. It's better to educate them in that case. I think I'm going to slowly work towards a college in England's folly. Or I could build another wagon train to help transport goods around the colonies. We're going to need another wagon train, so let's do that. The college would take forever to build. It looks like our scouts will be mostly coming home. This scout would definitely be coming home. And then these scouts will be done here pretty soon. And they'll be heading back as well. Sadly, neither of them have picked up any promotions yet. Usually I can get three promoted scouts at least. Alright, we're going to make our beachhead right here. And we're just going to have to take our time sieging down that village. The merchant man can uh, just hang out right here, I suppose. Or actually, he can go give that converted native a lift. Let's do that. It's going to take a little while. We need to heal the cannons first and then hit Para. Guns actually went down in price. They're down to 7. Let's load up. Send off the caravel. Still got 1800 gold on hand. That's enough to buy a lumberjack. And then a petty criminal. Yeah, immigration's up to 131. Firebrand preachers at this point are probably borderline useless already. Let's grab ourselves a master fur trader maybe. No, I'm going to need another carpenter. Let's pick him up and send them on their way. I'll pick up the fur trader probably the next time around. We do not yet have enough fur harvesting to genuinely supply a second fur trader. This treasure's getting uh, swarmed right here. <laughs> Take one shot right now. I might actually have to bring down some more cannons to bring this village down. I underestimated how much time it would take to actually heal them. I probably should have stayed behind and healed them up first. Yeah, it's a 68% chance of success right now. I am actually using the go-to mode when I do that. I'm not holding down right click. I've had many mice start to fail on me as I've been playing games and have sometimes done battles I did not want to do. Yeah, these cannons are probably going to get a lift on the galleon over here. We just need to drop off our people first. I'm also going to stand down this expert silver miner. No longer need him to fight. I need him to be a regular old colonist. And instead, I'll use a regular free colonist to be a soldier. Mr. Silverminer will go over to Silverton. Alright, so one farmer goes to Silverton. One farmer go to Cigar Town 2.0. But let's send him over to maybe just England's Folly temporarily. No, no, we need to establish Cigar Town. Let's establish Cigar Town using a farmer and a tobacconist. We'll send them over towards that direction. The silver miner is going to be used to build the silver outpost over here. That's his only job, really. But I do want a pioneer to go with him when he does that. Let's send one farmer over towards England's Folly, and the rest will stay on the boat. We'll load up the cannons, and we'll sail on down over towards the southern edge of our little empire. There's a French caravel. 
We'll get him on the next turn. 19% attack rate, not a big deal. Let's see what he's got on his ship. We absolutely destroyed this guy. We got some more, and we got a little bit of tobacco. I guess we'll go ahead and bring that back, why not? Hey, we generated a great general from that battle. The great generals and the civilization we make don't generate like experience when you make units because you obviously don't actually make units. You can just use them to give experience to your units. We're going to make some supercharged soldiers, that's for sure. You know, I really wanted to move most of my production inland, but it might just be reasonable to just allow the coastal cities to become the primary production hubs. I'm going to alter my plan slightly here. I'm going to move Tool City over by one right there. That'll give it more access to farm these tiles. And I'm going to move Rum Village over by one as well. So we can have access to more grasslands to farm. This will probably be actually a lumber town. Or a <laughs> lumberton. Lumberton's actually a city I used to live not too far away from in Texas. Small little city. More of a town than anything else. I think Cigar Town's going to get moved over by one as well. We need access to better lumber supplies because we'll be doing some actual construction there. Building Rum Village here also prevents us from getting into issues with these two. I think I've collected every single ancient treasure on this map and the AI hasn't gotten a single one, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to swap the free colonist here into the colony and bring out the petty criminal as the soldier. That's right, we're going to arm our criminals. The free colonists are easier to educate than other people. Well, easier to educate than indentured servants as well as criminals. I finished a wagon train in Campbell. I think we're going to build another wagon train. We're going to need plenty of wagon trains to effectively move the goods around our empire. Now I can do things like move food around more easily without having to rely upon my ships, which are pretty busy. And just like that, I should have another colonist on the next turn. So we're going to build ourselves Denver. Denver does not need a stockade. Not now. Denver really doesn't need anything, actually. We'll just have them build political points. The farmer will go do his thing in the corn, and I'm going to assign one of the pioneers to immediately start working on mining that heat so we get as much silver as humanly possible. I'm going to kick a farmer off the galleon to go over to Beaverton. Beaverton is going to become a bigger city, I believe. We'll produce most of our coats here. It is far enough away from my spawn location. I'm pretty sure the RES spawns in the same spot you spawn, and they should head immediately west to attack Remembrance, most likely. Maybe England's Folly. Probably going to be about 50 50 between which one they choose. I'm going to swap the free colonist here down to a regular old colonist, arm the criminal, because that's such a great idea. And then I'm kind of thinking that we send some of our free colonists over to the Inca. To learn tobacco planting, cotton planting. Wait, the natives founded another city. I've never seen them do that. That wasn't there, right? No, I've never seen them found another settlement. So the free colonist gets on the boat. The carpenter, I think, going to set him up in England's folly. What else we'll do though is we'll send the lumberjack over to Denver, and we'll do some lumberjacking there. With the construction of a lumber mill and remembrance, I am probably persuaded to build a dry dock. Alternatively, a college would be a pretty good idea. The people that are going to work here are going to be the carpenter, the fisherman, the weaver. We could maybe get a tobacconist set up here temporarily, but the weaver has the main job here. Let's work towards a dry dock. Why not? I think that the education facilities can wait. Oh yeah, we've got another uh, free colonist here. Let's pull the merchantman back slightly. We'll put the free colonist on the ship. And we got another one over in England's Folly. So we will put... Well, we'll sell into the port right now. So Carpenter gets off the ship. Free Colonist gets on the ship. Other Free Colonist also gets on the ship from doing carpentry. Carpenter goes in the carpenter shop. And all four of these puppies are going to go learn tobacco planting, primarily. I believe I'll do probably three tobacco planters and one cotton planter. Sadly, there's nobody that I can see that actually does fur trapping. Yeah, not a single one does fur trapping. There's exactly one expert sugar planter way up here, but getting there would take quite a while. Oh, there's one more here too. I could send a ship up here, drop a colonist off, and get them over there. It'd be best to assign a caravel to do that, but caravels are kind of slow, oddly enough, in this game. I do think there is an effect where, like, to a certain extent, building a bigger ship, sailing ship, does make it faster. Alright, let's set up the cigar town. What shall we call it? 
let's just call it Baco. Now, Stockade and Baco might be reasonable, but I don't think it's going to be exposed to much danger. Here, I do want to start immediately working towards a Tobacconist shop, and we'll have the Master Tobacconist do a little bit of a grunt labor going back and forth, harvesting lumber, and then making hammers. Beaverton is also going to start working on a fur trading post instead of political points. It's going to be a while before you can get that done, though. I'm going to send the converted native that I recently got from the Tupi over to Baco. It's going to take him a while to get there, but I really need my ships doing other things. Getting a little caravel to ship people around wouldn't be a bad idea, but they move at 3, which is barely faster than 2. Merchant manage is better in every single way. Got to kill another defender over here in the Tupi land. They have left their village of Piranha completely exposed though. We got 99% odds, we're gonna take this shot right here and wipe them out, very good. So it's another day for me again, but that's applied twice because I actually played two and a half hours from this point right here, but the screen was completely black and it only recorded the mouse. I have no idea what the problem was, so hopefully it doesn't happen again. We actually made it almost 40 turns in the future, definitely 30 turns I believe. After a wagon train in England's folly, next up let's go ahead and build I think a lumber mill. Let's go with that. Our scouts are basically done over here in the west, and what I came up with to do with them is to actually send them to learn sugar planting. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the scouts, move them down over to this village, clear their specialty, and then train them right here. And they'll escort my treasures that I have here, down south. About that time, we'll be sieging the French out, most likely. And I've got more guns to sell to... Montezuma. Let's see what he would like to give us for them. A pretty good amount. I'll take that deal. I can't remember if it was this time or the last time that I traded with him. He had 7,000 gold, so somehow maybe he did regenerate his gold. I do not know. I'm also still trying to figure out exactly how the education system works in the vanilla version. So I think it's anybody that's working in the colony during the time that these people are being educated is how it's determined whether or not they can take that specialization. They only have to work one turn during the time they're educated, I think, but I'm going to find out here pretty soon. And we've got more cannons to unload to bring down Para, and the galleon will stay here to pick up the treasure once we get it. This merchant man will go ahead and head back and do some shipping. We need to get some shipping taken care of. And our privateer continues to get to do his thing and just sink the French caravels left and right. When Oscar Francisco Pizarro, he gives the looter promotion, which just gives you more gold when you pillage. I'm not going to take that. And I'm not going to take John Rolfe, who gives you plus 25% tobacco. We're going to produce a crap ton of tobacco without him. We do not need him. This converted native is going to walk carefully to the east. We should be able to deal with the Koopi before he gets into any major danger. And now we burn down this village. There we go. Treasure goes on to the galleon. Converted native as well. One soldier goes to defend the cannon right here. Everybody else just chills out and waits. Privateer is going to get veteran too. And with only 12 tobacco on board, I don't think it's worth coming back yet. We'll just stay where we're at and repair over time. Uh, there's already another French caravel here. I don't think that we want to take him on. Well, let's give it a shot. Now we definitely have to retreat with such little health remaining. But we did get him. Let's go ahead and let's head back. I need to go ahead and swap the lumberjack from... Denver back to Remembrance, so I'll take care of that now. I did take care of that a lot later on, but I'll do it now instead. And our silver mine is up, so we're actually getting 4 silver per turn from this location. So these colonists are going to put the Pioneer in for one turn, making some coats. We should be offered a hardy Pioneer for these guys, and the next colonist that goes in, I can find out if they still have Pioneer as a choice or not. And at that point, I'll know whether or not it's based on you have to work during the time that you're actually present in the colony or if you only have to be there for one turn and the mod we the people and the mods that is based on you only have to work for one turn in the colony at any point in time not just during the education of the colonists you know what this converted native i've got right here i'm actually going to bring him to the beachhead right here everyone else is going to move towards taking down piranha or however you say it, Parana. And we need food for this silver mining colony, so the converted native will farm this tower right here, and we'll mine the silver that right there using the silver miner that's in that stack. That'll work pretty well. And when I first founded that colony, he didn't have enough food to support himself, so he had to do farming at first. But now I know better. 
Alright, so I was going to teach these guys to be Master Carpenters. I'm going to continue teaching them to be Master Carpenters. I need one for Baco, and I also need one for Beaverton. Alright, there's no one in the village. All we have to do is push with a single unit and take care of it. And just like that, the Tupi are gone. So other than that, Silver Miner, Converted Native, Yuko on the square, Treasure, Bits off the square, and everybody else basically is going to wait for the merchant man to come back by, and then they'll get a lift across the bay, and they might get lifted all the way up to here. I'm going to need another merchant man in not too long. In fact, I might as well buy him now, although I do need a lot of tools. I'm not going to make a whole lot of money off these things. Let's just keep the money that we have on hand, pick up what we have, send the merchant man back. Well, we don't want to send the merchant man back. I'll just use the merchant man to ship people around like I did last time. We'll send the galleon back with all these goods and treasures, and the galleon will be what picks up all the uh, wonderful tools, because that's exactly what I did last time. Now let's get rid of Native. I'm going to send him somewhere else. I don't need lumber production in Denver. I'm not going to actually produce anything in Denver for quite some time. What I'm going to do with him is I'm going to send him down to Beaverton, and he'll do fur trapping. We should be getting another fur trader right here in not too long. So three of these three colonists are going to go learn tobacco planting. The last one will go learn cotton planting. The merchant man will head back, pick up our army, and move them across the bay. With the construction of the dry dock once we get 50 tools, I want to work on the warehouse expansion next. We need more goods, storage, and remembrance. I'm not going to help the Spanish against the Aztecs, absolutely not. They're very furious that we've traded with the Aztecs, but I don't care. And the king is asking for money. No, absolutely not. He already taxes us constantly by increasing the tax rate. All right, moment of truth. Is Hardy Pioneer still an option? It is still an option. Huh. So either the mod that I have modified one of the base game files, or if you work at least one turn in a colony, then you can learn that specialty. I don't know what they did. Your results may vary, just so you know. So this colony, we're going to call it Glitter Hill. It doesn't need to build anything at all, so I'd rather just make political points. Of course, the silver miner is going to do his silver miner thing, and the native will provide the food. Everybody else just chills out in place. The English should be arriving here pretty soon, assuming that they're going to take the same actions that they did last time. Our season scout has arrived in the sugar planter village. We're going to clear specialty, and then we're going to actually educate him among the natives. He couldn't do it with scouts in the regular colonization, so I do think that's a definite improvement, of which there aren't very many in this game, but there are improvements. There are. Just not a whole, whole lot. Got the converted native ready to do lumberjacking. The tobacconist will do some carpentry to build the tobacconist shop. Once we get the tobacconist shop rolling and some more tobacconists, we'll be pumping out the cigars. This medic promoted scout is going to run north and meet the army when it arrives in France. It will provide the medics. And we've got another graduating specialist. I realized a little bit later on in the playthrough that because the education expense grows by... 50% of the original cost every single time, linearly, that you're better off not training fishermen, lumberjacks, etc. You're better off training things like weavers, carpenters, ideally expensive things. So we're going to train a another weaver. Carol has arrived to buy some more guns. We're going to load up completely. We are going to have to sail around the north, though. That particular Aztec village that we went to just now isn't going to produce that much gold anymore. Not sure why, they just don't want as much as they did before. Alright, the army boards the ships. The army needs to go to chill in Beaverton for a little while, and then the English should land with their little caravel. Unless I haven't already killed the caravel, in which case they might be just doing whatever still. I'd actually kind of prefer that they just not settle near me. Gamble basically just continues to build wagon trains repeatedly. We need a lot of wagon trains for all of the colonies that we establish and 19 to 20 percent tax raise but in order to stop the tax increase we'd have to do the remembrance guns party and we would not be able to get rid of the boycott you can't get rid of the boycott in the remake at all i think the mod allows you to get rid of it two of these soldiers that are from the army are going to get pulled out and i'm going to use the great general on them the indentured servant specifically will get the great general. That means that each of them will get 10 experience points. One of them is going to get double ranger and then triple ranger. Now this triple ranger allows them to attack multiple times per turn. 
and gives him a crap ton of forest attack and defense. The second one, I'm going to give a bunch of Mountaineer and then a Ranger. Then they're going to go back into the settlement and we're going to wait a couple turns and heal everybody up. Thanks so much for watching Dealing With It. I'd really like to hear any feedback you have about the video in the comments below. If you liked the video, leaving a like would help the video to reach other people that might also enjoy the video. If you'd like to see more, you can always subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one in episode 5.